The figure stood about five inches high on craggy, angular legs. Balance might be the better word. I gently rotated the clay base, marveling at the craftsmanship in their eight delicate limbs. On one brightly painted eye, winkled frozen on the other. Dev, they're incredible, I breathed. How long did you spend making these? She beamed. Well, you remember I told you the arms kept breaking? Sculpty's great, but it can't support too much. But yeah, do you like it? It's a sort of not really Hanukkah gift I ever gotten. The two spindy robots bear hugged each other on the dining room table. Their construction had started at the beginning of the autumn, when Devin and I spent several weeks browbeating each other on how popular a physics game maybe you could even recognize it. I'll try to explain. As a remainder part of the high-tech crash dummies, two-player cooperative to solve puzzles at the beast of of this infinite testing facility. Over the course of the game, the wire and metal characters established every insignificant bond of friendship. I hadn't been home in months, and but the internet affordable a wonderful playground, of course. We weren't especially proactive. And it's kind of like a pop gun you're asking him to use it. We solved almost pretty much all the levels after a handful of pranks, switcheroos, and mercy killings that reduced one or both robots smoking and scrap. But that was about half the fun. Doing things that were uneasy, unfeeling machines never would. Like hugging. I examined the sculptures closely, unable to get enough. At last, the stalker bot and squeezed the bird-like pea body with an expression of a warm glee with a blue eye. She fiddled with him awkwardly. Look, it's like a picture of me at prom. Peabody's monocle or face blinked with open and surprise. In the center of her eye, right past the orange ring that made up the iris, I noticed a pin-sized hole. I, the thought occurred to, to ask about it, even in the game. The robots had pupils, but passed. Nobody was to look at this gift in the horse's mouth. I lifted the base with the perfect care, shielding it away from stray guts of probability that might send Devon's work crashing through the floor, gave him a living room and a view top of my mother's piano. Beautiful, you should do this for a living. Just then my name ran out of the kitchen, I thanked her yet again and went to help mash potatoes for the big momentous national holiday for Christmas dinner. Wait, is there anything, anything I can do? She bounced up and followed me into the good-smelling fray. The rest of the evening was filled with shouts, stories, and clicking forks. Eventually, excuses were made, goodbyes were said, and guests made their graceful exits. Devin left, too, having extracted the promise to talk the next day. When I was alone, the house was so quiet, I gave no thought or play that wonderful little gift. It just sat on its perch. Silently observing the insert glassy eyes, Sleep came easily. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've enjoyed the comfort of my own bed. The comforter fell over like a living embrace and hauled me to a dreamy-like unconscious in seconds. At some point, the light began to prick at my eyelids. It was the only mildly annoying fast, and I dragged my hands up to shut the glare. After for a moment, it clicked off gratefully. I snug deeper into the covers. The light snapped back on, stronger than this time. I squeezed my eyes shut, but it burned the angry while the white circles passed them. I tugged at the blankets over my head, but something bit my neck and jerked away, like it was every time when you overslept and you find the sun blazing through your open window and someone telling you to please wake up. The tiredness vanished, irritation set in instead. I stopped fight, fight, fighting and rubbed the sleep away. I... Don't exactly know what time this happened. It must have been past midnight, several hours after going to bed, because when I opened my eyes, they were too blurry and unfocused to make out numbers on the clock. All I could see was a glowing blue orb staring back at me. A tight gasp echoed my throat, blowing back something that made black metal and gleaming of white plates. It emitted from the surprise, burst of unscheduled clicks, and before scrambling to its feet. Possibly Atalus' single blue eye was shriveled angrily. I hardly felt the strain in my neck as I watched 
totally dumbfounded. He jabbered and gesticulated wildly. Every other word he punctuated with the stomp to my chest. They felt like traps and his limbs came alive. Energized, as if he had jumped from the game model made into the physical world, Devin's homemade version was good. Better than good. But this was just impossible. I tried to grab him. To my anguish, this incredibly weird dream somehow. But everything felt slow and floaty. My body hardly twitched. From the blind spot, jerky stops pattered off to my shoulders. Perhapily, I caught something that looked like an unlonged egg. Suddenly, Peabody swung into a hazy focus. She began to answer the other robot in the same complicated electric patas. Peabody's eye then flashed red in the darkness. The center wasn't empty anymore. It extruded a long silver needle that just began to retract and rip dipping something into clear and vicious. My neck throbbed. With dull panic, I realized why I couldn't move. There was nothing to do but breathe and go slow crazy. It was obscurely human caution. Atlas tiptoed experimentally towards my face. He prodded my nose with the stumpy white grippers, then immediately leaped on the back and scrambled behind Peabody. It would almost have been as cute if my skin wasn't already deadening to the feeling. The separatical bot seemed surprised. His ocular panels narrowed the expression of mad glee, and he began to hop up and down on my collarbone. Shrieking triumphantly, Peabody yelped and skipped in a circle. Victory dance. This was just too... Eventually, they tried get gloating and high-fiving. I retreated to my sternum, careful not to capsize the risk and fall in on my breathing. The miniature flags looked at each other and shrugged. What now? The gesture seemed to stay. But Peabody got an idea. It sounded ridiculous that it was of a machine... One I could say his behalf, believed that it was an extremely vivid dream, combined with ordinary sleep paralysis, but other than the train of thought was uncannily recognizable. The shiny eplosoid that made up her core made her jump a little. She shot aside when I died looked like squishy giant on the bed. To me, then to Atlas, back and forth, he scratched his round metallic noggin, perplexed, as taller bought looked at him up and down. Suddenly, her limbs shot out, grabbed Atlas's body. She then turned him over and under and around, ignoring his flailing. He was perfect for a spear, but about the size of a ping pong ball. She nodded, satisfied, and set him down gay days and confused before jogging up to my face. Her orange bulbs closed smugly, and watch and learn, it proclaimed. I thought I was completely numb until I felt their free cold metal fingers jab under my right eyelid. Every nerve in my body ordered me to yell, but nothing came out. Fill my lungs and blow the her away, but nothing happened. Tugging the force was incredible. Dimly, I could still feel the robot dodgingly thrust another arm into my eye socket. A horrible popping sensation filled my skull. Pain... Pain sick, lunging pain. My gorge rose, but what I cried out was even deeper than the fulfillment of a primal fear. The lizard brain, howling at the loss of the working organ. There was nothing I could do but scream inaudibly. One final wrench, and Peabody lurched forward. Her arms were bloody white ball. My severed optomic nerve dangled out behind like a tail. I tried to weep if half succeeded. My right eyelid collapsed into the bleeding hole, useless. A few tears almost completely nuffled the remaining of my vision, but I thought I could see Peabody handed her prize to Atlas. Incredulous, he hugged it. There wasn't any enough energy in me to moan anymore. Broken and ruined, something in my head felt incredibly swollen. All I could do was listen to my own paralyzed, sobbing breaths and watch the disgusting little creations play with their new friend, tossing it between one another, trying to bounce it off the bedspread. But a weird unexpected transformation took place before my eye. Their grab got faster, more aggressive. Each one got less time to play. Incredibly, they began to fight over their new toy. Peabody sized and outstretched and their skinny joints. 
holding it above Atlas's head. He delivered a swift kick to her torso and snatched the eye out of the air. For a moment, he glared at one another. The LEDs in her cores began brightening orange and blue with computerized approximately of hate. Then they froze. Slowly, freakishly, joyfully, the robots turned back towards the bleeding, panting monster. This time, it was Atlas who did the idea. My heart stopped. No, please no, no. <gasps> oh, God. I woke up, realizing that the thing was all but a horrid nightmare. Ah, <sighs> Phew, thank God it's over. But you will not believe it.